Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, just a couple things before we get to hear from Pastor Bob. First off, we are gearing up for September 22nd. So mark that on your calendar. It's gonna be an exciting uh, start to the fall really for us here at TFBC. Uh, we're gonna start our midweek communities. So we have our community groups that will be meeting throughout the week in different people's homes. But on Wednesdays, starting September 22nd, we're gonna have a lot of different communities all gathering together uh, here at our church. There's gonna be dinner, there's gonna be groups for, for men, groups for women, group for married couples, just, just community groups that are gonna be meeting here. Uh, there's gonna be a children's program. Our youth groups will continue to meet. So much going on, we would love for you to be a part of it. So make sure you mark September 22nd on your calendar. That's when a lot of those things are starting up. Our youth ministry is going on right now, but a lot of those other things will start up at that point. Uh, another thing to be aware of is we have a new Tulare First Baptist Church app. So please go on to either the Google Play Store or the, the App Store and, and make sure you download that. You'll be able to find our events on that app. Uh, there's a, a way to read your Bible on that app, all different things. It's incredible. You're gonna to wanna to download that to keep up to date with everything we have going on. And as always, you could also check out our website for events, tulareffbc.org. There's an events page, all different things on there as well. To stay connected, we recommend either going on the app or going on our website. Both of those are great tools to use. Well, I'm gonna pray for us and then we're gonna to get to hear in our message time. God, we love you and we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And, and I just thank you for all the different communities that we're gonna start seeing uh, starting up again. God, just even now be preparing hearts and just help that to be a great time of studying your word, but also building that community based on that. God, I just pray that it would be a great time of growing closer to you and growing closer together as your church body. God, we love you and we thank you for this morning. Speak through Pastor Bob and help us to walk away changed by you. We ask this in your name, amen. Greetings, church, and thank you for tuning in as we uh, continue in our study, What Am I to Believe? And uh, certainly as we uh, look around us and are mindful of all that's happening in our world, uh, that question can often come to mind, uh, what am I to believe? And we want to continue in this series to bring you back uh, to the Word of God and a reminder that as followers of Christ, Certainly, uh, we answer that question, what am I to believe? I'm to believe in the Word of God. Last week, we talked about, as we began this series, longing for the Word of God, hungering to uh, commune with God, to hear from God, certainly listening uh, with a heart uh, bent toward believing and trusting in, in the Word of God and, and certainly uh, living in obedience to it. And as we continue to uh, move forward in this series uh, in the craziness of this world. Certainly want to encourage a church, be mindful to be praying uh, for our brothers and sisters, uh, the church in Afghanistan, as well as certainly our military personnel and situations, um, uh, very challenging situations all around the world. Let's be mindful to pray for our leaders. And, uh, and as we go through this study, just to be reminded again and again how important it is in crazy and chaotic times to, uh, to have the Word of God, to give us guidance and comfort uh, to hold to the truth of God's Word and the promises therein. And so as we continue the series, I want to invite you to turn with me to the Old Testament, uh, the longest chapter in the Bible, in fact, Psalms 119. Not only is it the longest psalm that we have, but it's the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalms 119. Um, often people discover it. It's uh, kind of just right in the middle of the Bible, or certainly there uh, close to the middle of your, of your Bible as you, uh, as you turn to that passage and uh, we asked the question, what am I to believe? And I want to um, say in the, in the title of this message uh, today that we are to believe that God's blessings are connected to His Word. Now, I hope to unpack that a little more as we move through the message. Uh, what does it mean to say or to make that statement? God's blessings are connected to His Word. 
Well, let's first of all begin to define blessing. You know, the reality is that it's a term that gets used uh, rather haphazardly, and uh, uh, you might even be able to build a case that uh, it is uh, kind of a churchy word oftentimes that uh, is used in all kinds of contexts. And, uh, and so we want to uh, take a moment to really define as, uh, as we talk about the blessing of God. Certainly we're not talking about uh, materialistic things. Uh, it can be, I guess, in some cases. Uh, but the biblical idea of blessing is certainly uh, much more than uh, stuff and materialistic kinds of things. In fact, I would contend, I heard it said this way, and I think it makes a, a very valid point. Uh, the blessing of God is not, not so much your, uh, your stuff, uh, but being able to enjoy the stuff you have. In other words, being able to have a proper perspective of all that God has uh, blessed you with and to be able to have that relationship and commune with God. Uh, basically, we think of blessing uh, spiritually or biblically speaking as being the favor of God or being able to enjoy uh, God's divine favor. And so that can, can look uh, very different depending on the context uh, that we might find ourselves in. For example, in the book of Job, if you're familiar with uh, the book of Job, uh, you know that uh, he, uh, he loses, goes through a lot of suffering and, and challenging and difficulty. In Job 5.17, we find blessed is the one who God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. So all of a sudden we get this picture and this idea that the blessing of God oftentimes is reflected in the love of God that's expressed in discipline and the reality that God corrects us and desires to correct us and help us in that way. And so when we think about last week's passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, Scripture, uh, God breathed and useful for correcting and teaching and training in righteousness. Certainly we find here, again, that connection. The blessed, uh, one is blessed if they understand what it means uh, to be corrected by God. Secondly, we find in James chapter 1, if we go to the New Testament, we also find blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so again, we get this idea, biblically speaking, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Now, I share these two passages of Scripture, the one in Job and the one in James, uh, just to begin to get the idea that when we talk about blessing, at least as the Bible would define it, uh, you begin to see that it's... Uh, it's something far different many times than materialistic or uh, materialistic things or stuff, uh, but it has a lot more to do with, with God, our relationship with God, experiencing the presence of God, the favor of God in our lives. And many times we do discover uh, that is through God's correction and certainly us trusting God as we go through uh, times of testing, as we persevere, uh, as we continue to look to God and have our faith strengthened. So let's look at Psalms 119 then and this idea that the blessing of God is connected to his word. And certainly uh, Psalms 119, I want to encourage you to spend some time with it in this coming week. There's so much there that we could read. We could actually do a whole series just on Psalms 119. Uh, so we're just going to be touching on a couple things uh, today in the context of this message. But I want to challenge you to think about experiencing God's blessing involves, first of all, acknowledging the truth about wisdom and blessing. Certainly acknowledging the truth about what blessing is. As uh, we already mentioned, it's often taken out of context and maybe uh, simply defined as materialistic uh, um, success or money or things. Uh, certainly we understand the truth as we acknowledge the truth of what Scripture teaches. Uh, the blessing has far more to do just to do with our relationship with God, having favor with God, and understanding uh, God's presence in our life, and certainly having the wisdom, uh, wisdom we might define as seeing things from God's perspective. And so we begin to recognize kind of who we are and, uh, and how to best handle uh, the resources, the stuff, in fact, that God has entrusted to us. Certainly the wisdom of God's Word would uh, teach that we are stewards, and oftentimes uh, we struggle with that. We want to see ourselves much more as owners than as stewards who are handling, uh, hopefully handling well, that which God has entrusted to us. So let's look together. Psalms 119, we'll begin in verse 1, acknowledging the truth about wisdom and blessing. Verse 1, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord, 
And blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. And then he says the statement, you laid down your precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Now, precepts, we might understand there is uh, statutes or commandments. Oftentimes, uh, maybe the best place to start unpacking that would be in Exodus uh, chapter 20. We find the Ten Commandments, uh, often, um, well, I was going to say <laughs> often well-known uh, in our culture, but uh, that, that may, uh, may not be as true as it used to be. And the reality that uh, the role of the Ten Commandments in our lives, and, and the idea here uh, in Psalm 119, God has given us His statue, His commandments, and, uh, and they are to be fully obeyed. And so it might be an opportunity for us to think about, uh, in our culture, uh, what is the role of the Ten Commandments? And are they important anymore? And certainly as followers of Christ, do we even see them having any significant role in our lives? And I want to suggest to you that what the psalmist is saying here, and I think is equally true of all Scripture, is that if we're going to experience God's blessing, we will discover His blessing has a, a direct connection to His Word and our learning to uh, abide by His Word and live out His Word, uh, understanding that, as the psalmist says here, um, they are to be fully obeyed. Uh, he also says in this passage, when you seek Him with all your heart. And so we begin to recognize that when we acknowledge what God's Word is teaching, it would suggest to us that when we uh, seek God with all of our heart, when we seek to obey and live in obedience to His Word, that we are going to experience more of God's presence, more of God's divine favor, more of God's blessing in our lives. And so that's why it's important for us to, to begin to think about uh, what am I to believe and why is it important that I make the Word of God a priority. If you spend some time reading in Psalms 119 and study there uh, in this coming week, as I would encourage you to do so, you'll find that, uh, that the, the psalmist is basically saying uh, three very important things about God's Word. We're finding that God's Word is, is authoritative, uh, certainly it is reliable, and it is powerful. Those themes uh, are, are, are weaved throughout Psalm 119. And so when we look at those things, uh, God's Word being certainly authoritative, reliable, and, and being powerful, we begin to understand why, therefore, it should be a priority in our lives. If we truly believe God's Word is, uh, for example, authoritative, reliable, and, and, and powerful, then we would recognize uh, at the same time that's, that it needs to be a priority in my life. And so I want to encourage you to, to begin to think about why it is the Word of God needs to be a priority, and largely because... Um, we, need, we, we want to see you experience the blessing of God, uh, to position yourself in order to uh, experience more and more of God's divine favor in our lives. As you read uh, in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, begin to, to think about the reality of, of God's Word, that these commandments are given to us to give us guidance in how to live our lives and and I would suggest to you, we often hear people talk about breaking the Ten Commandments. Uh, uh, I really believe the better way of thinking of that is we really don't break, our, we really don't break the Ten Commandments. A uh, better way to think about it is we break ourselves against them, against God's authoritative, reliable, powerful Word. The psalmist also writes in Psalms 119, 35-37, he says, Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. I want to suggest to you that in this verse, these verses 35 to 37, we find here uh, the reality that a blessing of God is if we understand our need for God to help us, to turn our eyes away from worthless things, to turn our eyes away from selfish gain. Now, those two things are very much a part of the culture we live in. There are so many things that truly, I think, with wisdom, we begin to recognize just how worthless they are, the things of this world, the uh, constant pursuit for selfish gain. In fact, the Bible says it is the love of money that's the root of all evil. And when we see the evil abounding in our world and we see all the worthless things that are getting elevated in, in ways of, of priority, we began to see a tactic of the enemy to rob us of the blessing of God, to rob us of the things that really matter. And we find ourselves just caught up in chasing after things 
that just really don't matter. I mean, they're just not that important. Uh, people have often heard me say I, I can often be amazed at the things people choose to care about, the things people choose to like this is the most important thing. And, uh, and oftentimes it becomes an indication of just how far off of God's word we have gotten uh, in terms of just understanding it as a priority. All the things, the foolish things of this world, for example, that we would place as a higher priority than the word of God. And so when we think about a very practical application of this passage of these two verses or three verses, 35 to 37, uh, we begin to see how often we don't have time for God's word as we chase after oftentimes the worthless things of this world and this, this, this desire to constantly chase after it, whatever it is, that is going to make me happy. And somehow I need more and more and more. The psalmist also writes in Psalm 119, 71 and 72, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The, the law or the word from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Now the psalmist here is understanding something about God's word and also the blessing of God in the sense that uh, he's saying it is good for me to be afflicted. In other words, it was good for me to go through a challenging time. It was good for me to go through a painful time. It was good that God allowed me to experience that which enabled me to be awakened to what really matters, to what is important, to what should be a priority. And clearly the psalmist is saying here and in, in, in comparing it to silver and gold is saying what I learned when I went through that difficult time, that challenging time, that time when I was afflicted by the things of this world or the experience that I went through, what I learned was what was really important, what really matters. Friends, I, I'm pretty certain that there's many of you who could give a similar kind of testimony that oftentimes some of the blessing that we uh, are able to experience, even when we go through challenging times, oftentimes, especially because we've gone through some challenging, difficult times, is we begin to recognize, to be awakened to what really is important, to what really matters. And oftentimes, it's the promises of God in His Word and how His Word meets us in the midst of those challenging times that we begin to understand more clearly the value of God's Word, the value of having God's presence and God's peace with us in those moments and to certainly uh, be grateful to get that perspective of just how blessed we are. You know, many times we're not able to see and celebrate and enjoy the blessing of God because, as we stated earlier, we're so focused on selfish gain and chasing after the worthless things in this world. So it's about uh, understanding, acknowledging the truth and the wisdom of God's word. Secondly, I think it's also about aligning myself uh, with God's Word, aligning my life with God's Word. Once I acknowledge the truth that the blessing of God is indeed connected to, related to the Word of God and, and my need to prioritize the Word of God, to understand it for what it is and to be in uh, relationship with God through His Word, allowing His Word to, to feed me, to guide me, to speak to me, then I can begin to align my life with His Word. That's where we begin to make it a part of my daily life, finding those ways where I can commune with God, connect with God, hear from God, and align my life with His Word. You know, recently uh, uh, I had the opportunity to drive in my automobile, needed an alignment. And I don't know if you guys uh, know what it is, if, you're, if your vehicle is out of alignment, it, it might constantly want to pull to the right or pull to the left. It can be quite dangerous uh, if it's uh, way out of alignment. And I think what happens in our lives, similar to an alignment, is it can start with just something uh, not right, maybe a broken part, something's not functioning right. And it can start out rather gradual sometimes until it gets to the place where we're just way out of alignment with God's Word. And I, my fear is that what we see happening in our culture uh, and just the reality of how far we have gotten from God's Word that um, it's reflected certainly in our lives and, and uh, as in the lives of many who profess to be followers of Christ, that we're just not, we're not aligned with the truth of God's Word, that truth that'll set us free. And we find ourselves just all over the place um, as a result of that. In Psalms 119, verse 9, Scripture says, How can a young man, a young person, stay on the path of purity? And then the answer, by living according to your word. 
I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, if we think about this alignment, we begin to see the psalmist would suggest to us here that it's important if we're going to align ourselves with God's word, that part of that is also about not only seeking God with all of our, uh, all of our heart, but also hiding his word in our hearts so that we might not be so easily led astray, so that we might not sin. We're going to discover in the coming weeks as we go through this, um, this series of messages how Jesus was able to use the Word of God to combat temptation. And we'll look at that in, uh, in coming weeks. But that's kind of the idea here that, that, uh, that the psalmist is pointing to is the, uh, the need for us to so align our lives with God's Word, to so have uh, God's Word be a priority in our life that it's, a, it's, it's not just something we're reading, but we're taking it into our heart as we seek God with all of our heart. And therefore, it, it enables us, it empowers us to be able to combat the sin and the ways the devil would come against us uh, to destroy us. And then in Psalms 119, verse 103, how sweet are your words to my taste. Kind of reminds me of last week, we talked about the double-double or ice cream, whatever we might think of that we long for, something that would be representative of God's word that we could say, yes, I, it's sweet, uh, has a sweet taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth, the psalmist says. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. You see, if we're going to align ourselves with God's word, we're going to have to understand the importance of having God's word be a part of our daily life in order to uh, lighten up our path, give us direction as to the way God would have us go. And as God's word brings light to our paths, uh, it, it enables us to see more clearly the direction that we need to be going, the path that we need to go. He talks about hating every wrong path, meaning that there are choices that we have to make, all kinds of paths, all kinds of ways we can approach situations, but we want God's word to illuminate and light the path in the right one that we should go. It's almost like that, that path gets lit up and, uh, and we can see the light saying, go this way, go this way. If you think about practical application in our lives for a passage like this, Think about circumstances or situations you're in where you need wisdom. Maybe you've sought counsel uh, from others in the workplace or your friends about, hey, how should I handle this situation? And certainly uh, we know what it is to get input from others. Uh, sometimes even callously they might say, well, I'd tell you what I would do if I were you. And many times by the time they finish that statement, you realize like, oh, wow, uh, <laughs> you obviously don't even understand the situation. But God knows our heart. God knows the situations we're in. And God desires to illuminate the path that we should go. And so as we align our lives with God's word, it's about praying and getting into the word, allowing God to speak to us, to renew our minds with his word so that we can see more clearly the path he would have us go. In a very practical sense, um, if you think about someone who's hurt you or betrayed you or wronged you in some way, and, uh, and you look at all the things you could do, you know, maybe just never talk to them again or maybe try to get revenge and hurt them back. And, and as you pray about it and God begins to illuminate the path, undoubtedly you'll discover a major theme of Scripture, a major teaching of Jesus, and that is to forgive. And he begins to illuminate that path, to lighten the path, that that's the direction we should go, to, to begin to take those steps toward forgiveness and reconciliation uh, so that God might bring healing about in our lives as well as in, in the situation uh, for others. And so that would be an example of how God's word, therefore, is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. God helps me understand how to move forward in these situations when I prayerfully seek his wisdom and his word. And that leads us to the final point I'd like to share as we talk about experiencing God's blessing in our life. And certainly when you go down that path of forgiving someone, you are uh, positioning yourself to experience God's divine favor, God's uh, peace that he can only give and, and the blessing that comes from that instead of holding on to that anger, that bitterness, that resentment and that hurt and all the destruction uh, that can come from that. So we think about uh, certainly uh, what it means to uh, align our lives with God's word, certainly acknowledging the truth of God's word and how it relates to specifically to wisdom and God's blessing. And then I think it's about then taking the step to ask God to direct our footsteps, simply prayerfully asking 
God, would you direct my footsteps? We find the psalmist doing that in Psalms 119, uh, verse 133. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. You know, when you think about what the psalmist is saying here and getting to the place where we can truly appreciate the connection between God's word and the blessing of God, experiencing God's divine favor in our lives, uh, we would know at that point when we truly recognize, understand, uh, for example, the authority of God's word, how reliable it is in our lives and certainly the power to set us free. Uh, we begin to recognize not only is it worthy of being a priority, but we begin to pray, God, help guide my footsteps with your word. Let your word function in my life kind of like a GPS. Now, I saw this uh, uh, gentleman who put this together. I love this. He was talking about uh, uh, thinking about God's word uh, as God's GPS. Now, most of us know what it is nowadays to have the blessing, we might call it, of uh, GPS uh, it's so easy now to, to get play. Really, uh, all we need, somebody, just give me the directions, we might say to somebody. Instead of trying to tell me how to get there, just give me the specific directions. And we punch it into our GPS uh, um, and we find that we're just giving us turn by turn how to get to a certain place. And we love it. It's amazing how much time it can save in terms of trying to get to a place you've never been to before. And you just trust the GPS to guide you and, and give you turn by turn directions. And so we think about God's word like that GPS. And yet think about it in terms of God's GPS, meaning uh, we can think of it as, as certainly God's positioning system. Uh, in the sense that God wants to position us in those places. If we'll trust him, follow his guidance, he wants to position us to the places where he's going to pour out his blessing. Many times we miss the blessing of God because we're not positioned. We're not in the places where God wants to pour out his blessing. Could be something as simple as, you know, missing church or missing opportunities to come together and worship or fellowship with other believers or simply missing time to study God's word, even just individual private time with God. When we miss those places, those positions where God is leading us so that he can pour out blessing and wisdom into our lives, then we therefore miss some of that blessing that God has for us. We can also think about it being God's GPS system in terms of God's protection system. God wants to protect us. So many promises in his word about how he desires to protect us. And if we see God's word as a GPS, God's protection system, we can begin to uh, understand how we can trust God in situations and rely on God to protect us. How about God's GPS as a God's peace system. In other words, God's word in so many places brings us peace. God wants to give us peace. It's very clear. Uh, Jesus would say again and again to his followers, uh, my peace I leave with you, I give to you. God desires for us to have peace. And when we're in his word, we can experience the blessing of God's uh, GPS, God's peace system. How about God's power system? Certainly we get into the word, we begin to discover the power of God and how nothing is impossible with God. And that leads us to God's possibility system. Yes, no matter what you're facing, the GPS of God's word can remind us that nothing is impossible with God and begin to bring to us the power of God to transform our lives and our situation. May you know what it is to recognize and acknowledge what Christ has done for us on the cross. And that when we begin to experience the hope and the healing, the forgiveness, the new life that is a result of what Christ did for us on the cross. As we profess our faith and believe in him, may we continue to experience the blessing of God as we allow his word to speak to us and position us, help us know that we have his protection, uh, the peace that only God can give, and certainly the power of God unleashed in our lives to help us as we uh, deal with difficult situations, being reminded that with God's word and God's wisdom and God's presence with us, nothing is impossible with God. As you move forward in whatever circumstance you're facing right now, whatever you're dealing with, may you know what it is to say, I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not on my own understanding, but I acknowledge God and the truth of his word in all my circumstances, and I know that God is going to make my path straight. May we have that confidence as we look to his word and experience the blessing God has for us. May God bless you. We'll see you soon.